Okay, thanks to everyone for joining us. Uh, we're back again, the Golf EXV team. Uh, Tim's taken a back seat on this particular occasion because we are talking golf all the way through. Uh, today's guest is Rob Key, former England international cricketer and uh, for Kent also, um, and self-confessed golf nut. And we know that for a fact um, that uh, Sean can bring some stories about his obsessions uh, with gizmos and things such alike. But uh, anyway, welcome Rob and uh, over to you guys. Uh, anyone got any questions to kick things off? Rob, how have you coped with not being able to play mentally? Uh, I think, do you know what? If, if they open up the golf courses, I know this is not really the sort of focus of what the government are looking to do, and there's a lot bigger issues going, but if they open up the golf courses, I could do this for a long time. You know, you don't have to see anyone. You just go out, play your golf, and that would be it. But I've had to put a curtain up. I've taken over the kids' swings, and I've sort of put <laughs> one of Fleur's curtains up, and I've been hitting balls into that. And now it's just got very dull. You know, when you feel like you've done everything, I'm in such a great position at the top. I've laid <laughs> off. You know, I've shallowed the club. I'm, ro I'm pronating my left arm, all this crap. No, you've got a prenate now. Pronate, and that was, that was back in the 90s. You've got a, pro, <laughs> you've got a prenate now. Well, what about supernate or whatever it is? I've been trying <laughs> all of that. You know, I've YouTubed every, you know, every YouTube golf coach that I'm probably better than has given me a tip. Um, and every single problem I see on their things is generally the ones that I think I've had. Can so someone I've... explain to me what pronate is? <laughs> it's probably something to do with that. Hang on, we're, we're papering all, over all the cracks, you know, Rob, right? You've been in for seven weeks, self-isolating, right? And your golf game is struggling a bit. But let's, the important thing here is your kids can't go on their swings. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, the no. most important thing. Kids, stand back. Daddy's playing golf. In all, <laughs> fair, in all fairness, I, th I think I was, it's, there was a video of you online, wasn't there, yeah. Rob? I think, in all fairness, if they're on the swings, I think they're pretty safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, did you, did you break next door, God? Uh, did, you, did you break their greenhouse? What happened was, so my neighbour has, a, has a, like an L-shaped garden that goes behind us. And I was doing, like, I was trying to work on this shallow in the club, which is hard for a cricketer, as Slug will say. And I suddenly just... I, I sort of tried this move and I just shanked it straight into, but she had been gardening there not long before. <laughs> and I'd had a bit of an argument with her where I said, there's no way the ball physically can get <laughs> over your fence and into your garden. <laughs> it will sort of go and it whacked into the fence behind us. And my first look was just to see whether she was still there. <laughs> who, who, do you see, who do you see for lessons, Rob? Who do I see for lessons? Mm. I've had more coaches than buzz lines. I've seen... <laughs> I've seen Ben Barham. Oh, and Ben's a good mate of mine. Yeah, Ben was good, you know, and Ben I send the odd video to now. I've had a guy called Dan Moore <laughs> on YouTube. I've had, I could know there's millions. I've listened to every. Well, what you, what you trying? You say you're trying to shut. You say you're trying to shut out the club. Uh, is that in, is that on the way back or the way down? On the way down. So what I've done, he says, Ben, that my right elbow. <laughs> It doesn't fold enough. It sort of goes yeah. behind me. But I, I, I struggle. I not necessarily on the way down, but certainly for me on the way back. And it might help you. Um, you know, if if sometimes I get the club a little steep on the way back. Yeah. Um, so basically, the one good way to shallow the club, and it, and it would be also you know um, with the downswing as well as hit balls above your feet, because then as the ball as you raise the club up, you swing shallow this way. Oh really? It'd be the same if you, if the ball was if the, if you were swinging too shallow, if you if you were then to hit the ball from below your feet, you'd probably struggle to make contact, or you, you would your your strike would be very inconsistent. So if you can somehow get the ball, it doesn't have to be like you know two foot above you. If the ball, if you can get the ball six inches higher, somehow have you got a map? Yeah, I've got mats, but I find it, you know, it flatters you hitting off a mat. If you, or if you've got, or if you've got like, if you've got like, um, if you hit the ball off like a high tee peg and you hit the ball and you hover the club at the ball. So the yeah. ball, so the club is say three or four inches off the ground. And then yeah. try and feel like you're swinging, you're swinging the club more around you. That will, that should flatten the, that should flatten the plane. 
You see what I like about that? Sorry, that sorry guys. Can, I, can we do? Can we do? Can I phone you? Can we do this again at nine o'clock tonight? Because I'm struggling to sleep. And <laughs> fucking hell, that nearly put me into a coma. <laughs> Yeah, I'm listening to every word of that. I love this. This is the, I'd have this all day. All these oh. tips. I'll be doing that later. Well, actually, you move, your, move, your, move your clock to nine o'clock and you can, you can piss off and go to sleep then. I just go get a pillow. I go get a pillow now. Well, Sean did actually tell us, Rob, that you were quite a fan of the training aids and gizmos. So uh, maybe a few stories there. Well, I don't listen to anyone that I've beaten, so slug can <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's true. That's true. But, <laughs> Easy, as you just mentioned, you will try and find anything, anything to improve that 0.5%. <laughs> I had one fella, I had one fella who, t he was down at, where was he, Wilderness Golf Club. And he told me to put a, an alignment stick in the end of the club. <laughs> and so I was doing this, and every time it's whipping me on the side, it looked like I'd been on Game of Thrones or something. <laughs> And this is what a lot of golf coaches do, I think. So then I come down, so I think, well, this must work. He must have seen my swing and seen something do it. The next day I went down there, he had seven different people with the alignment stick in his club teaching them the same thing. Oh, you'll get, you'll get a few coaches with the tip of the week, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> What's an alignment stick? <laughs> <laughs> what do you play off, Scott? <coughs> yeah. Uh, the yeah. The rough, <laughs> uh, the field next to the golf course. <laughs> I'll be, I, I play off nine at the moment. Well, nine's a good golfer. Scott, uh, Scott's last coach, is, his last lesson was take two weeks off and then give up. <laughs> I am, I, I've, never had, I've never had a lesson in my life. I'm like Baba Watson. They, they can't hear me. <laughs> I, play, I, I, I play a bit like him as well, but I'm, I'm right-handed. I can't because my because my knees don't work and my hips don't work and my shoulders don't work and because the golf clubs don't work. Uh, there's no point having a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> what do you play off? What, what do you play off, Rob? Also, my good golf would be six probably, but my bad golf is horrendous. <coughs> Slugs are fair of person to probably judge what my golf is. Yeah, well, that's it, it's it's steady, Kizzy. You have to say it is steady. I mean, you're hard to beat, you know, at times because you get too many shots. <laughs> but obviously, your home course is Prince's, and if you get on a good day, then it's uh, it's it's not bad. But Jesus, this I've seen some some wind at that place. I'm sure you have as well. That's yeah. the you you play it. you play at Prince's, Rob. Yeah. So, uh, oh, so you mean, do, so you must know the McGuirks then. So I play nearly every day with Francis. Oh, Fran. Yeah, I, I, Rob and Fran. I go back way. Back to the amateur days, with them back into the 90, early nineties. They're they're good lads. You see, Franny, it, it, this bloke he played in the Open, didn't he? Twenty eleven, and he's got that most annoying thing that golf good golfers have, where they just say, "Well, you just do this." Yeah. You say, oh, how's that help? You know, he said, "Well, you've done that. We we'll just do that again." What you do? Yeah. Fran Fran had a lot of talent. Fran had a lot of talent. I think in his uh, <laughs> yeah, in his early sort of late teens, early twenties. I think he. Uh, he had a lot of talent for uh, the pubs yeah, and the bars as well. <laughs> <laughs> he did unbelievable. He was like, yeah, the both. But no, they're they're good lads. They're really good. I'm I haven't seen them for. I'm seen Rob for ages. I saw Fran a couple of years ago, I think. But uh, I'm seen I'm seen Rob for ages because I think Rob pretty much runs the place now, doesn't he? Yeah. So Rob runs it, and I tell you where they've just got is Chart Hills. Have you played there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, uh, a long time ago. Long time yeah, ago. That's one of my favourite golf courses around. But it's like. It's been gone to ruin, but they're just starting to turn it around again. Do you like the mug, Matt? Can you remember where the mug's from? Uh, that looks like Atlanta Country Club. No, you're wrong. Is that a hockey stick? <laughs> Hang on. Say, show that again. Put it right up to the screen there, Rich. It's the logo of the golf club we played at in Atlanta. Oh, OK. It's a chair with a golf club leaning against it. Was that the one with the really quick greens, but the rest of no. the golf was pretty cat? <laughs> No. Peach tree? Was it peach tree? Setting down. Setting down. How oh, was it? Are you sure? Yep. <laughs> Are you sure? Can I... Atlanta Country Club. No, it's not. Can I just say, though, this is our first... Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll, 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 just, I'll just go again here, look. Ah. Go again, look. <laughs> Naughty. 
Yeah, because we're in very esteemed company here, Rob, because both Matt and Rich have played uh, the Augusta National. He's probably told everyone he made birdie twice on number 12. <laughs> he's not listening. He's, he's not the... listening. He's zoned out. I'll tell you what he's doing. He's searching for the logo of that golf club. I am searching for the logo. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> I'm sure it's set down. <laughs> if I'm wrong here, I'm going to get nailed. Aren't I? If I'm wrong, I'm getting nailed. Hang on. I might be wrong. It's not often that happens. <laughs> I was thinking there, you mentioned Slugger as a nickname for Sean. Um, I was just wondering if you guys have also got nicknames from when you played. I don't know why we call you Slugger. That's a Hampshire thing, isn't it? Happy Hampshire. Why were you Slugger? No, uh, happy Hampshire. Get rid of that. No, that, that started way back in high school. I was too slow between the wickets. As oh, you can see, Keezy. <laughs> <laughs> I never got run out by you, though. No, not me. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's it then. It's just because you were slow between the wickets, no, literally. No, I was just slow between the wickets. Unfortunately, the two younger brothers who, who sort of they, they inherited it as well, so unlucky for them. But yeah, it's just stuck since then. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, we've had plenty of uh, run ins and, and good times over the years, Keezy. Yeah, you, you any, did well against us. Any nicknames for Keezy? Bobby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is that Bobby? Bobby, <laughs> uh, I don't know what 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 a water used to call you. What used he to call me. He calls me BFK, which means big fat keys. Big fat keys, yeah. <laughs> and then the my worst dyslex one. My dyslexia kicked in. <laughs> the, worst <laughs> one, the worst one that I had was when that. Do you remember when Honey G turned up on uh, X Factor? <laughs> There was this girl who was like one of the joke acts who wore, yeah, she's like a 45 year old woman and she looked exactly like I did actually, which wasn't the most flattering <laughs> to either of us. <laughs> and Freddie Flintoff decided to um, tweet, he thought it was hilarious that this Honey G looked like me. So he would start tweeting about Honey G looking like me to the point where she fell, because he's got like two odd million followers. He then had to backtrack and become her biggest fan rather than <laughs> abusing her. To which Honey G then started messaging him and putting Freddie sort of in her camp to try and help her get through the X Factor. But every Saturday was the longest sort of evening of my life where I just got a piece of Honey And she scored 8,000 runs for a local cricket club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was. Yeah, she wasn't the best, poor thing. I'm, I'm sure, I, I had a look on my phone the other day. Uh, I think it might be on social media. I'll have a look. But I've got a picture, I've got a video of you, Matt. We were playing at Stoneham. Um, and it, I, I think it was me, you and Jace, I think, playing. And it, it, was, uh, it was when we were playing the 13th and they had the steps there so you could see, look up to see if the green was clear. And it oh, was yeah. snowing. And <laughs> I don't... Uh, you might not remember it, but your your words after your shot were very well chosen. Oh and yeah, it's just one of those. I just vid uh, for some reason I just videoed it. wasn't uh, and uh, so I have to try and find that if I can find it and get it on the. Is it was it something along the lines of you useless fact C? <laughs> no, no, it was only it was two words, two <laughs> words. That was all. <laughs> who's, the, who's the best um, golfing footballer? At the. The best one I've played alongside, um, uh, do you remember Paul Telfer? No. Oh, yeah, Telfer. Yeah, he was a decent player, wasn't he? Celtic. Um, he is actually properly obsessed with golf. Oh, he, really? he would actually go and play. He was telling me when he was at Luton early on in his career, he'd actually go and play nine holes on a Saturday morning before going out and play football on a Saturday afternoon. What was he, a goalkeeper? <laughs> no, right back or oh, midfielder. Sorry. <laughs> in, fact, now, you, in all fairness, if you could do that, you would have done the same, wouldn't you? Oh, for sure. I remember. I remember those times when it was absolutely lashing it down at Stoneham, and we'd agreed to play, and I'm just like, "No, I'm not going out in this." And you're like, "Come on, let's go." And I'm like, "Seriously?" <laughs> it's just like you got to hill, top soon. How hilly is that course, Stoneham? That's, that 18th nice. has killed many a member. I'm telling you. <laughs> I tell you what, I played with Teddy Sheringham last year. He's a decent golfer. Oh, is he? What are he playing? Yeah, he's a very good golfer. He drives the ball miles. Uh, you got to probably say, um, 
Shevchenko's pretty good as well, isn't he? I've played with Shevchenko. Yeah. He's a good golfer. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we played with uh, Janola as well. Oh, really? My God, we got, we got we got put on the clock by the by the grounds man, and we had a ball <laughs> again. And it was only because it, because Janola he was he was just signing autographs and kissing all the ladies all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> and we just like, you know, not not like you know, and they were coming up to him and they were jumping on top of him. And we were like, yes, oh, dear, come on, we're trying to play golf here. And you know, like, smooth, smoothest man ever, would he? <laughs> Pete, you spent a couple of uh, holes with us, didn't you? Yeah, it was pretty manic. He, he drew the crowds in for sure. All the women loved him. <laughs> Tell you which footballer wasn't a very good golfer. When I played in that Dunhill Links with Blandy, we played with Rude Hullet. Do you remember? Oh, his, his, his left knee was knackered though, wasn't it? He had the his proper left knee was about, about three times the size, but yeah, he, was, he wasn't the best. <laughs> Matt, did, did you ever do that uh, international cricketers versus international footballers? No, I, I never got invited to that. That was a last right. shot, wasn't it? Oh, jeez. <laughs> But there, were some good, there were some good golfers there as well. Who in particular? I don't know my footballers all that well, to be fair. Um, I'm from Zimbabwe, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Scoey won, Scoey won the whole thing. Is he? yeah. huh? He's a bandit. Scoey won the whole thing. Who, Chris Schofield? Yeah. Yeah, he but he's a pest, thing. isn't he? He was a noise he when he played cricket, he was. He used that, Chris Schofield was a leg spinner to play for England, and he, we used to go on the academy on these trips. And the little shit would do, um, we'd play snooker, and he could rack up like 100 breaks, and I'd get yip the yips if I got the black lined up. And he'd do like, he'd break 80. And then he'd put you in a snooker, and you'd just sit there thinking, mate, what the hell's that? You know, I need the white gloves on just to put the colours back every time you pop one. <laughs> Yeah, because Matt, you were a pretty decent cricketer in your time, weren't you? As a kid, yeah, I, pl I played a lot of cricket as a kid. Yeah, I was, I had, I had a decent eye for a ball, and I could, I kind of played most ball sports to a decent standard. But yeah, cricket. Decent. You're I, not a bad snooker player either. I wouldn't have been a footballer. Um, I would have. I'd, my next step would have been try being a cricketer. Uh, oh really? You know, I've, had a, I've had an 88 break at snooker as well. Oh. That's <laughs> um, so yeah, my, I, I had. Hockey and uh, tennis and table tennis, I could play all them pretty decent as well. Just to add to that, you can do the Rubik's Cube in under 40 seconds, isn't it? Uh, my record is 37 seconds, yeah. Yeah, but no one cares about it. Like, Jesus, <laughs> you, you're sounding like the most boring bastard ever now. <laughs> the Rubik's Cube? I used to have to take the stickers off just to get back to normal. <laughs> Bit of glue, yeah. no problem. <laughs> I'll send you a video, a tutorial video, Scotty. Oh, I, my, my, my mind can't compute stuff I got. You've got all the time in the world at the moment. 40 seconds uh, and uh, throw it at the wall. <laughs> you guys learning anything new during the lockdown? Scott, you were picking up the guitar, weren't you, or something? Welsh. I, I've learned, I'm learning to speak Welsh. <laughs> Oi. Right. I, I found yeah. it. I found it. I'll, I'll put it up on the... <laughs> I've mellowed in my old age. That's quite a few years ago. I don't get so angry now. I broke a few clubs back in the day. My clubs. <laughs> yes, your clubs. I tell you what, though. I was um, was it two uh, two years ago? I was at Lords for England Pakistan. Are you uh, having you on the bus? Yeah, on the fan van. Yeah. And uh, they uh, they decided for a laugh to stick me in the nets. Remember? Yeah. So they stuck me. They, they stuck me in the nets at tea time. So I was there in my shorts and the shirt, and uh, they put a pair of pads on me, put a bat, and uh, Wardy was feeding the machine That's that right. bowled the ball, and Nas was uh, near. Nas was behind me, uh, wicket keeper, That's and they right. ramped it up. They put it. They put it at ninety mile an hour, and I, I, I just about see it. And then they put it one hundred mile an hour. This little yellow ball was coming straight down one hundred mile an hour, and genuinely I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. So three of them went past the back, thank God. And I said, uh, I said to Nas, I said, I, I can't, I can't see it. I said, I'm not sure. He said, but you, you're just a bit f too far over to the left. So I moved over to the right, and it came down. It hit my pad, and it I went, went there. And I, <laughs> I, I hobbled down, and Nas fell over laughing behind the stumps. 
and I said, and I threw the bat and I said, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm not playing this again. And then I, I had tw- I had tweets of NAS fans going, I can't believe you were hurt by what NAS was saying. <laughs> yeah. He'd fallen over laughing behind the stumps. <laughs> and how how you how you boys stand there watching ninety three mile an hour balls come down at you? Uh, but, because by the time by the time by the time you see the hand, it's it's I could I could hear it in the in the keeper's gloves. I, 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 had a, but, I had an experience down at Hampshire where I um towards the back end of my playing days, Warney uh, and Alan Mullally uh, were at Hampshire and both lived in the in the ocean village in the area where I was. Uh, and so one day I've I've got them round my house. Uh, they got a, we're having a barbecue, and they're in the middle of a championship match. And so they, so they said to me, "This is like just before the last game of the season. We needed to beat Everton to stay up on the last day of the season." So they went, well, "Come down the uh, come down the county ground tomorrow." He said, well, "Get in the nets, and me and Warney and Al will, will bowl at you." I was like, "Oh, brilliant!" No, I fancy myself as a bit of a batsman here. <laughs> so I'm I'm facing alternate deliveries in the nets at the county ground from Warney and Al Malal while this championship match is going on. And, uh, and I can't lay a bat on Warney. I have no idea where the freaking ball is going. And the ball is making a noise like I've never heard as it's coming down at you. It's fizzing through the air. And I'm going, what, what the hell is that? And and but Al is like trundling down at about 75 miles an hour, and every ball I'm smashing him. I've got him, I've got him covered. I can just hear Warney. Winding him up at the far end, going, he's got you on toast, Al. He's got you on toast. <laughs> so all of a sudden, he takes a few more strides back. And I, I've got all the gear on and everything. And Sean Udell is, is stood square onto me, videoing this. So I've got this on video. And Malali all of a sudden puts a little bit of, a, of effort into one, drops it in short, and the ball has fucking whizzed past my grid, missing me by about that much. I fall backwards onto my arse because I'm shitting myself. <laughs> and this is all on camera. We've got we're playing Everton the next day to try and stay up in the Premier League. <laughs> Brilliant. Actually, I've seen that video. I think you showed me that. <laughs> hey, can did I can I just of, did you get Max, of, like, it's like the Truman show. Everything he does is on video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear any of warning? Sorry, Rob. Did you hit any of warnings? Uh I might have got a bat on it a couple of times, but I had no idea where it was going. Yeah, it was unbelievable. I, I just... saw, on Sky, I saw the masterclass with uh, Warney about three years ago. Yeah. And even, you know, even today, you know what I mean? Well, how long has he been retired? Ten years? And the, he was just putting that, he was just getting that ball to do things and nobody, nobody could, it was like on, it was like, it was like on a string. Yeah. Just incredible. Yeah, I, I had the privilege of standing at first set to him for a long period of time, and it was it was phenomenal. And um, the most amazing thing is, is that if someone, I, re- I remember playing Middlesex, and um, he was bowling to Straussy at our place, and he bowled this ball, and Straussy sort of went back and nicked it to me, to my right, between keeper and first slip, and I dropped it, <laughs> and he went ballistic, and I was like, shit. <laughs> I might have to put my hand up and say and try to remove myself. But the next ball, this thing came down, and like you said, um, Matt, it was just it sounded like a like a rocket launcher coming down. It was, and Strassi did the same thing, went back, spun sort of half a meter or so, pinned him on the on the leg, LBW given out, and I was the happiest bloke around. <laughs> I was jumped on his back. Jeez, it was he was he was phenomenal. He was. Did you ever see when you were fielding at first slip, Slug? Mm. Um, did you ever see any batsman that was properly comfortable facing him and, and get the better of him? Uh, no, not really. Um, he, to be, to be fair, when that two thousand five year, um, when obviously he had that amazing Ashes um, series. He was obviously going through a whole bunch of stuff with his um, family and stuff. And, you know, there was um, stories of him and, and all sorts of things. And someone came up, I think it was one of the, the, the journalists came up and said, Warren, he's done. Like, you know, he's, he's passed his, his best and all that. And I think it was Herb, um, Matt Elliott, um, opening batsman for us, wrote a piece in the newspaper and said, I don't think you guys realise, as soon as Warren puts on a baggy green, you got to see, you know, the revs are going to get more, the intensity is going to get higher, 
And it just showed because in 2005, he just absolutely blistered. And um, there wasn't anyone, KP was the only one who sort of really sort of, he, he started obviously in that series, but he was, even in the nets, you could see when Warnie was bombing him, KP was just trying to take him on the whole time. Um, and he didn't obviously change his game plan in that, in that 2005 series. But yeah, I mean, what a, what a privilege to play alongside him. Have you played with that Joe Miller? No. Because he's in like 400. Yeah. He put, he, uh, he's sorry. been, he's been yeah. to the Wisley a couple of times. Um, and uh, apparently, as, 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 I know Matt's been, Matt's been to the Wisley. Have you played the Wisley, Rob? Yeah, I've played them. It's not a place for a long driver, is it, the Wisley? No, but if you, uh, if you, start, if you sort it. of, on, on the patio, uh, outside the clubhouse, if you yeah. look just to the right, you can see the third green of the church, which is part three, over yeah. the water. Matt probably, he's, he stood on the pat, on a, on just on like a drive road, Matt, and hit putter onto that green. <laughs> <laughs> Has there been anything on the golf course that's ever come close to... Um, you know, your career moments, um, scoring a try or catching in the slips, hitting a six maybe, um, slotting a penalty? Yeah, well, uh, uh, it was a Christmas before last. Uh, I was playing uh, the 2010 and uh, the wind was going down on 18 and it's a big 554-yard par five. Walked down in the front if you haven't been on it, and uh, I hit driver off uh, a driver off uh, the team, and it went left onto the helipad, uh, which was because it was it was quite fluffy. So I thought oh, it was good. I got a good little layer. Uh, so I hit driver again to twelve foot. To twelve uh, foot. Yeah, to twelve foot, and then over was those right. water, isn't it? Yeah. Over the water, so got over yeah, the water. but the, the water with the water was iced over and it bounced off it. Scoot it no, up. over the top, flat bang. It just wasn't going quite wet. Just so I picked it out and I thought, shall I do a matlatissi and ask somebody to video this? <laughs> and then I thought, oh, better not, better not, because if it doesn't go in, you look like a fool. And then, <laughs> you can uh, part for part. No, I, tried, I had a twelve foot there, and uh, and he went in, and that is my golfing claim to fame. I've. Uh, Birdied 18 on uh, the 2010, and that's my best ever sports story in any sport <laughs> I've played. <laughs> I just I, wish now I'd done a Leticia and videoed it. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't video any of my hole in ones if that, if that makes up for it. How many of you had? Five. What? Matt, talk, talk us about your. Can I borrow one? one? Now, can talk us about the albatross. Oh, right. ah. Can I borrow oh, yeah. one? Oh, yeah. But I think... So you've had four, I've had one. Five, five hole-in-ones, but I think my albatross probably tops all five of them. <laughs> well, well <laughs> the, I, if, if this isn't in the zoo, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't know if you've... Uh, I know that, that obviously Slug and, and Blandy have played down there. Keezy, I think you might have done as well. You've been down to Remedy Oak. No, I haven't slugged. Have you... Where are you playing now, slug? It's been... <laughs> so there's, yeah. a, there's a par five fifteenth, which is a dog leg to the right. With a oh, is it? Is this when they? Is it? Uh, yeah, but wasn't this when they were redoing the hole and the, and they put the? No, it wasn't. They, 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 they put temporary green up. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Like four yards off the tee, wasn't it? Just you've never had an albatross. Don't get yes, jealous. Yes, I have, and I have one against you, <laughs> Pete. Or, Pete or, uh, I was there. I can vouch for that one. <laughs> a legitimate par five as well, not one that was on a temporary green. It wasn't a temporary green, but the really annoying thing was, I'd, I'd hit my tee shot down this par five, and if you hit it down the right, it's a bit of a blind tee shot, so you can't see your ball land. And I pushed it a little bit too far right, and I thought I might have been in the water that went up the right. You might have found Laurie in there when he was in. I know, there. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I hit a provisional off the tee. Provisional went, provisional went down the middle. So I'm looking for my ball. I found it. It's about a yard short of the water. Uh, 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 and I thought, well, that's all right. That's nice. So I've had to hit a little cut with my five wood around these trees. I can't see the green. And I've hit this little cut around the trees. And what? Well, yeah, that came out all right. That'd be on the green. And, um, and I looked across at my playing partner who stood in the middle of the fairway who could see the green. And I went, was that all right? And he went, he went yeah, it was. I couldn't see it finish. It disappeared at the end. <laughs> and I went, what do you mean? <laughs> he went, I think it's gone in. 
<laughs> and I was like, oh, surely not. An albatross. Oh, my God. It was the highlight of my golf career. And you didn't have it on camera. It was, I didn't have it on camera. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely shocking. Did, did, did your playing partner didn't film it, no? No, I can't believe he didn't. All right. Uh, did you, did you oh, run is, and have a look? There is proof. I didn't run. Fuck me. You sure? <laughs> Because uh, Remedy Oak are one of the few clubs that have a, a, a board in the clubhouse for albatrosses, and my name sits proudly on the Remedy Oak honours board. Man. I see it regularly. What about you, Sean? Have you had anything on the golf course that's come anywhere close to your kind of career moments? My my brief, obviously, golfing career. I had last year. I was playing the Open qualifier at Frilford, and I think it was. The six or seven, there's quite a long par four. You've got, you've got sort of split bunkers in the middle of the fairway. So you either go short or try and, if the wind's wet, you can probably try and clear them. Um, and I decided to sort of just hit a three wood up to them and left me sort of just under 200 yards um, to the flag. And I hit a six iron. And I thought, oh, this is very similar. That looked really good. Sort of go up, up the green and it's sort of sitting in a dip. And so I hit it, looked really good. So I went for, and um, my playing partner, which was, um, I think it was Mark Lasky. Um, he was, plays on the um, Amina Tour and the, and the Pro Am, uh, Euro Pro Tour. And he said, I think that's actually hit the flag. And I was like, really? But yeah, anyway, walked up and I didn't want to, you know, when you, you know, you've had a good shot, you know, it's, it's, it's sitting quite close. I decided to walk past the flag <laughs> just to double check. It wasn't an, and there was a bunch of lads walking um, obviously the next hole and they just shouted out and they said, yeah, it's actually gone in. And that's my, that's my sort of, <laughs> one of my best shots. But no holes in ones for me, unfortunately. Oh, haven't you? You're not a golfer until you got hold in one. Have you had any, Rob? I had one round of worst golf course I think I've ever played in my sort of become a golf snob very quickly on a golf day. You know, man, you know, remember uh, Alan Eagleston? Did you ever do the Kevin Eagleston golf day? Doesn't ring a bell. Anyway, well, well anyway, I did that there. Yeah, an eight iron, it just, well, apparently it spun back the group in front could see and it cost me 500 quid, I think, which I was actually really mortified great. about. You know, you get a hole in one, you don't do it on a golf day with a load of your mates. Uh, my, first, my first hole in one was very cheap. Um, it was in the, the middle of winter at, at Stoneham Golf Club. Uh, I birdied the first, which is a par five. The second yeah. is, a, is the par three. And I hold a, a six iron. Uh, so I'm, I'm stood three under par after two holes. Went to greens again. What? <laughs> winter greens. <laughs> yours, all yours are in the winter. Well, no. You got bucket. You got bucket. No, no, don't do winter time. greens, as you well know. <laughs> Stop interrupting my story. <laughs> so I'm three. So I'm three under par after two holes. We get to the seventh hole. The heavens opened, and I kid you not, the course is flooded within three minutes, and we cannot play anymore. And I've had to abandon my round after seven holes. It's like caddy at, at that point, <laughs> I was four yeah. over par. <laughs> <laughs> the hole in one completely shot my mental state. I couldn't hit another golf ball after it. I was so excited. It was ridiculous. Does, does, so if you didn't finish your round, does that hole in one count? No. Twice. Twice. <laughs> twice. Counts, counts double. You've yeah, yeah, it's amazing there because you were still, you don't have a victory sign, but it flipped round not by mistake. <laughs> and that, that's why it was so cheap because there was no one in the clubhouse when I got back. <laughs> yeah, if you get, like say, when we get back, playing, you, get, you, get back one, it's, you, want to, you want to start holding in one when you get back playing because the clubhouse is still be shut. So have, you, yeah. have you lost? Have you, have you lost count of the amount of holding ones you've had, Rich? Uh, I've had ten. Ten. Yeah. ten. ten. But it's, it's quite, the weird thing about it is I, I think I've only actually seen about three go in. It's where, you know, if a flag's been behind a bunker or it's been like a blind, like I've holding one at seven at Stoneham, uh, so you can't see the bottom of the flag, that kind of thing. What about uh, tournaments? I haven't had, to be fair, I, I haven't, I haven't holding one on the, the European tour. Yeah, um, I've that in tournaments. Um, 
Uh, I've. Oh no, tell a lie. No, that that is that. Uh, actually, I've just told you a lie. There, I hold him one as is. Yeah. I hold him one in the South African Open in Durban Country Club. Yeah. And we were. It was on the. It was in the third round, but during the third round, we got rained off in the afternoon. We got a storm in in SA, which is quite rare. Um, and uh, so we had to come back on Sunday to finish the third round and then start again uh, the uh, fourth uh, the fourth on on the Sunday. So uh, it was about, about my third hole. It was about the about the fourteenth, I think, at Durban Country Club. And um, that was the strong point. And I hold, uh, it's about 190 yards. I think I hit 99 or something like that. And uh, <laughs> um, I hold it one. And then I get in and, um, and I look on the notice board and there's a BMW X5 for a hole in one on Sunday in the fourth round. But mine was on Sunday, but in the third round. Oh, got <laughs> it. And they, um, so what they ended up doing is they gave me, uh, they gave me two bottles of wine from one from Retief Poussin's winery and one from Ernie Outs. And apparently they were worth quite a lot of money. They were worth, you know, maybe two, three hundred quid. Not an X5 though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I put them, I, I packed them well in my case. And um, so I think, oh, I, I could give this, and it was right before Christmas. I, I could give this to my dad for Christmas. He, he, he loves a <laughs> bottle of red wine. And um, yeah, and um I ended up losing my case and I've never seen it from this day forward. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lost the case on the way home. So I didn't even get the, I, I didn't get the X5 and I didn't even get a chance to drink the wine. <laughs> what, what did you buy your dad? Uh, Fuck probably, or... a fish, probably a fish and chip. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, what is it about golf that's really got you, really sort of stuck its hooks into you? Golf is like, to me, it's the hardest game there's ever been, isn't it? You know, like you, you're constantly searching for this answer. It's like you've got a, a snake in your hand and you can't, you know, keep it anywhere. It's just an <laughs> you're talking about golf? <laughs> <laughs> See, that right. shows where your mind's at there. <laughs> it's always there. I do apologize. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just something, when you finish playing cricket or any sport, I suppose, you need something to replace it. And that's what... I haven't thought about cricket once. Not because it's not just boring, but, you know, just golf. All I think about... How, how, how's the commentary going? <laughs> <laughs> you go, well, you cut, you might cut that out. Out. <laughs> Hey, Rob, Sean was telling us that when he, you know, was playing cricket, he played left-handed and he's switched over to golf and it's right-handed. Um, with you going as a right-handed batsman and playing golf right-handed you haven't had the same sort of issues that a lot of cricketers get have you where they go kind of cover drive and extra cover as the shape of shot yeah they all say that cricketers should be good at golf i disagree i think golf is a horrendous move for um scott's doing his clock <laughs> <laughs> my clock's my clock's broken and i've got it i've got to do every hour i've got to change this so i know what i am <laughs> yeah so you have a few don't you but i think it's just such a Every I've never known anything where what you feel is completely different to actually what it is. I think it's a, you know, it's the ultimate quest, isn't it? Trying to play golf, it's the hardest sport. I, I think we, I, a lot of the cricketers I know they go play with BC and, 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 and the boys, and you go away and you play golf and everything, and you have a good time and have a good laugh. And, uh, but I, I think cricket is the only sport where they go, oh, come on. Let's go and play a, a, a quick round of golf. It's only been four and a half hours because normally when you're out there for eight all day, like, you know, golf, to you, like we, we go out, we play football or we play rugby, we go, God, four and a half hours. You're like, oh, easy. <laughs> you haven't even got to lunch. I know. <laughs> being, being a fielding in the longer, in four days, five days, is the closest a human gets to being a dog where someone just hits the ball and you spend the entire <laughs> day running after it. <laughs> I used to stand there just thinking about, you know, all the things, everyone, you know, when you play in the sport, everyone goes, and that tough time. I think, oh, you could be working in the city in an office. And I used to think, give me that office. 
I'd absolutely murder just sitting down. Well, at least, at least well, I'd always, I think if I played cricket, I'd want to be in the slips. At least, like, you can talk to somebody. <laughs> I know, yeah, but then if you drop down the ball. At, like, if you're down at, like, third man, you're thinking, well, I'm just down here, I'm here all day. I know, it's just like, the ball's never coming to me. Yeah, yeah, but that's what you want. You don't want the ball to come to you in cricket. You want it. To, you want it to just. You, you don't want to have to concentrate. Just sit there, <laughs> minding your own business, thinking of your next sort of invention that you could come up with. To get <laughs> what? Just flatten your back soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'd be doing yeah. now. Do you know it's funny? But you know, you know when you stand in uh, in the olden days when you used to stand in a queue, you know, for uh, for groceries, or you used to go down to the shop to stand in a queue, and you'd always know who played what sport because like after about ten minutes of queue, everybody would be going, oh, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, or they'd all be going, oh, cricket, cricket. I never stood in a queue and thought, oh, come on, who can I scrummage with? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, who can I smash to the floor now? <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? But it's all it's, it's all those keys so you end up, you know, presenting. Tell me, Rob, the, be, the best day you've ever had on a... Uh, because I love my cricket. I absolutely love cricket. What's the best day you've had on uh, on the field? Oh, Jesus. I tell you, well, I had one game when myself, I played... I didn't play that much for England, but I played <coughs> in Tess. Me and Freddie Flintoff had grown up together, playing with each other ever since we were kids, and we beat the West Indies. We both chased down a score at Old Trafford. And I reckon that was the best day I'd had because I had a tie, I got a double hundred at Lords, but I got 90 odd not out and Freddie and I sort of, when the game was in the balance, we ended up getting us home. And walking off with your best mate was probably the best feeling I've had in sport. Where we just, you know, when you just think this is so good. And then very quickly the next game happens and you snig off and you think, Jesus, where was that feeling gone that I had last time? <laughs> that, I think is probably my favourite. When I look back, that's the one moment mm -hmm. I, I sort of have the most fondness about, I think. What about so you? I, I, I love Lords, and you go into the long room of Lords and everything, and you see the, the, the boards. And when you go there and you see that 200 up there, you yeah, must yeah. bring back all those. It's a bit like when Max Letizia walks past and he sees the albatross at the golf club. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> probably a very similar feeling to you with Lords, <laughs> seeing that 200. <laughs> yeah, so, but the thing but the, with all of these things, they don't help you anymore, do they? I always think that's the sad thing about it. When you finish, I think it's just done, isn't it? And you move on and you end up on a Zoom call with you lot or something. You just all your, all your time is done, isn't it? And it's someone else to have a go. Well, yeah, I'm proud, but you can only go up in life. That's true. <laughs> but I've ended, I don't know about you, I don't have anything from my cricket career in the house or anything. I don't have any. Someone's at my cap, I can't find that. I'm just not one of those people that looks back and has any sort of... You wouldn't know I played cricket. Not many do if you came into my house. I don't have anything like that. You lot? You have golf pitches? I'll have golf. Like I've got the balls. That I've got a hole in one with. I've got that up there. I've got... Um, my son got his first par. He's 10. I've got his ball up. So my golf stuff, I'll put everywhere. But cricket, <laughs> it's not really... Yeah, you just move on, don't you? I suppose. Have you have you have you got a couple of boxes on the wall? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a couple of boxes. On. <laughs> They're coming quite handy now with the old COVID nineteen. You could have put a strap round them, had them round as a as a mask. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You'll probably remember what day you played if you do that, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Is that the same for you, Sean? Do you have much of a collection at home or not? Yeah, I mean, I don't have any memorabilia either. Um, you know, there's, if it is it's stored away in the garage, but um, there is definitely a, you sort of, once you sort of leave your sort of career, you've, you've you know, I've lucky enough, I obviously went straight into golf. So um, I think if I hadn't done that and found a, a challenge like golf to go into after, you know, playing for so long, I think I would have really struggled mentally. But, um, Golf gave me that extra sort of desire to try and and challenge to take it out. Keep seeing his ass. Yeah. You're lucky. You're very lucky. <laughs> you, know what, you know what's funny, Pizzi, is that when I made my test debut at Lord, we actually played together. Go on. In Zimbabwe. Was that your test debut? At Lord's. <laughs> when Jimmy got wickets. Jimmy got wickets, yeah. I mean, so we, you made I, your debut when Jimmy Anderson got wickets. Yeah, can you believe it? On the and, same, his, his debut, that one. And, and Tim McGraw was my first test wicket. And, <laughs> and I was it. <laughs> wow. 
when I came to your place, Matt, I could have been forgiven for thinking I'd come around the corner and find this kind of shrine, you know, with the nickname of God. Um, but uh, it was quite the opposite, um, you know. So do you have a collection at all anywhere? Um, I've, got, I've got a little office in the house. I've got a couple of bits and pieces up in my office. Um, uh, my, my England caps and um, a couple of pictures. But apart from that, uh, there's, there's a sh loads of stuff. If, if any burglars are listening... <laughs> yeah. uh, stuff in my garage. <laughs> you trying to give, give him a, a, good, give him a coat to go. good luck. Good luck trying to find it with the rest of the crap that's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Took him three weeks to get the lawnmower out. <laughs> a, a question. A question for Keezy, which was asked last time. Keezy, how many spare sets of golf clubs have you got at home? <laughs> Jesus. I've only been like four years, so I've got about seven different putters <laughs> because I mean, it's never my fault putting. I, I mean, I'm a shocking putter. So I've got the spider thing. I've got the, the old tailor made that's just the blade, is it? I've got long putters, short putters, everything just where you try and find it. I'd nick a putter out of the pro shop and go and play well with it and end up buying it. Have you got one of them one of them old man's putters that goes like right up to your sternum? No, no, no. The belly putter thing. No, it wouldn't work for me. But I've, I've got, got a be I've got a belly that goes down to my putter. <laughs> 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 there were loads of drivers. I've got the Callaway. Every new Cal Callaway is the best marketing team in the world because every every year the new Callaway comes up and I end up buying the new driver. What have I got at the moment? The you don't get it for free. No, I couldn't. What, what have I got? The um, how do you get it for free? Mind you, you're probably well, don't pay for it. <laughs> I'll tell you how you get it for free. Franny, Franny gives it back to you. Franny gives it down. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, I, I've got I've got, well, four sets of clubs, seven or eight putters, five or six drivers, everything just yeah. on that quest for the perfect game, isn't it? That's <laughs> my life too. No, and they've got no room to put any of your cricket stuff. <laughs> I haven't got one. I haven't got one cricket bat or anything lurking around. It's all just gold. Would would gold. would the cricketers like keep? Would if you've had like a, a, a like I don't know, like in golf, sometimes someone might say like you know you've got a favourite club or something like that. Uh, yeah, I've, like my five wood has got to be twelve years old. Yeah. Still, it's like it's like it's triggers broom. It's still, it's like fourteen new heads and thirteen new angles. Seventeen uh, It's still got it, you know, It's got the original shaft, which is just worn away like you can't believe. I, I, I every time I'm I get now, I think this. Is I'll, be, I'll be back now. I was like, and um, so like with cricket, do you, do you get like a? I know, I guess a bat has got like a, it's a bit like a wedge. The more you use it, it's probably oh, going to yeah. wear it out, that kind of thing. Yeah, I had, I had a bat that I had my best year with. But the problem is for us, they break much quicker than golf clubs do, I'd imagine. So it just snapped in half and you would pick it up and straight away you felt like you could I play suppose that's the thing in cricket though, isn't it? If you hit a poor cricket shot, you can't like just sort of bend it over your knee or anything like that. Your knee's going to give way before the bat does, I suppose. Yeah. No, but we... <laughs> I suppose, yeah, they, I would have, I would have had a bat that you could just, you just feel like, oh, you know, when you pick it up, it felt perfect. And then you'd have other ones that were exactly the same and you just could not use at all. They were shocking. There was something just wrong with it and you couldn't work out what it was. Well, here's a question then, and I'm sure we've all done it as golfers, where you've clipped your ankle bone with an iron or something like that. And it, uh, it hurts more than anything you've ever, probably more than childbirth. But um, is that, does that happen? No, you like can't say that. <laughs> um, does that happen in cricket like if you're playing a shot that's coming you know if you'd like a you're sort of digging it out under your feet and stuff and you've hit your ankle or something like that no you just I suppose the only thing like that is when you get hit in the nuts that's what just, you know, oh no there's no pain. Your own that is more painful than childbirth I don't care what even with the box on does that not protect you enough boxes are crap they don't do anything well they probably save you but they still hurt slightly. Bumble tells a famous story when Jeff Thompson hit him in the box, and I've had this, Jimmy Anderson did it to me, and we were on Sky, and straight away you know that it, it, it snaps the box because it hits it flush on, and what it does, it opens a crack and then it closes again. Oh, oh no, 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 don't go any further. No, I don't want to know. And it had closed on my, and you know that it's closed with your. Oh, 
no, no, can't, can't handle the this. <laughs> so then I had to get the physio on. And it fortunately it's just skin, but oh, oh it's a bit like it's a bit like the uh, was it? There's something about Mary, isn't it, with the zip? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not with the thing in your hair. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon's harder? That's the only thing that golf doesn't have. I think golf. I've got mo so much admiration for golf. So like, mentally, it's such a tough sport. But then in cricket, the only thing you have different, I suppose, is someone's trying to knock your head off. And then rugby is another level of that, where it actually tests your physical courage. Is that fair? Uh, yeah. Well, anybody, you know, people say, who's the toughest guy you've ever played against? And I always tell them, whoever put a pair of boots on and actually gone across the white line and played rugby, they're tough. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's some guys a bit tougher than others, where, you know, if somebody doesn't want to make a tackle, all of a sudden the lace comes in and... <laughs> or something like that, you know what I mean? Uh, oh, 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 sorry, but generally rugby is just trying to run over the top of people and hurt them. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. it's the, it's, I've, I've always said this, it's the only place in the world inside those white lines where it's acceptable to pull your opponent. <laughs> because yeah. that, that is the game. You're trying to run over the top of him, he's trying to smash you, you're trying to... You're trying to hit him down. You're trying to look over the top of him and you know make sure that he's hurt so bad he doesn't want to get up. And then after the game, as soon as you cross that white line, you, you shake hands and you have a beer together. Yeah. Um, Scotty, so, Scotty, who's the toughest you've ever played against? Um, for the, the 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 biggest hit I've ever had was Apollo Perlini. I was playing for Wigan against St Helens, and Sean Edwards passed me a ball and it went over the top of my head. And as soon as it went over the top of my head, I knew I was going to get pole-axed. So I thought, well, like, i got to catch it. So I, I caught the ball, and Apollo hit me so hard that I, I, I was on the floor, and I didn't want to get up. I really didn't want to get up to play the ball. And I thought, you've got to get up and play the ball. Scott, you've got to get up. Don't show me hurt. Don't show me hurt. Don't show me hurt. So I got up, and I played the ball. I, and... I, I staggered around, and this was in the, uh, the final of um, uh, the cup in Huddersfield. And I staggered around, and I thought, I've walked so far now, I must be out of shot of the camera. <laughs> and, and as soon as I thought I was out of shot of the camera, I collapsed again to the floor. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've never, ever, ever been hit like that in my life. I got up the following morning, I, I went again, I went, <sighs> And, oh, and I could not literally force, my, I could not get out of my bed. So I rolled over twice and got onto my knees on the floor. And I looked in the mirror and I was, I, I had a bruise from the top of my ribcage to my hip. Jeez. And I thought, oh, that was a good shot, wasn't it? <laughs> and and that, that is the hardest I've ever been hit in my life. Oh, really? how, long, how long does it take to, if you, if you say you've been in a really physical game, how long, how, long does it, how long does it take for your body to recover? So you go right. Um, poor. I'm, I'm not feeling too bad now. And I retired 18 years ago. <laughs> so <laughs> not too bad. A, 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 an international game would take to Tuesday. So play on Saturday, oh. you're probably ready to do, to do some physical stuff on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, and then you sort of they, they reckon that when, when I was playing uh, sort of, I, I retired from where in 2002 retired 2005 it was like having a car crash of 30 mile an hour every week oh, Jesus Christ yeah. without, I remember, with, obviously, with, without, without your seatbelt on I remember so was, uh, being in South were, Africa for a cricket tournament and the All Blacks stayed in the same hotel and they played a test against Africa I think in um probably in Soweto somewhere. And um, the next day, Richie McCaw came down to breakfast and they, all these people started asking for photographs and things and he couldn't see out of his eyes. Both eyes were close shut. Really? That's it, yeah. You could hardly see out of his eyes. Uh, I, after, after the game, you have your ice bath and everything and then the following day, you can hardly, you can hardly walk. You know, it's um, it, it's yeah, it's 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 quite quite tough. I couldn't well, put it this way: we couldn't pray from eleven till seven every day for five days. Yeah, 
It's you know, oh, it's but but saying that though, it's t- I play cricket and I played I played fifty over cricket now, and the following day it's, t- it's standing on your feet all day is tough. No. If you know, and if, I by a car at 30 mile an hour without a seatbelt every day. Yeah. Oh, if I won the toss, I'd always bat first to make sure uh, to make to make sure that because otherwise you, you field all morning and, and mostly afternoon, then you go out and you think, oh, I can't be asked about you. I'll just get out. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. Actually, that's what you used to think. <laughs> Come back, field all day, and then have to bat for five overs. Someone trying to knock your head off. You just think, I can really do without this. I've got a mortgage to pay, kids. To pay. <laughs> but going back, because I do with the cricket and everything, going back and, and actually facing uh, that West Indies attack in the in the, in the eighties, hold in and those, those guys. You know what I mean? I, I watched a I watched a documentary last year. And somebody was asked. What was the best way to face them? We talked about Warren earlier. What's the best way to face those West Indies batsmen? They say, get out first ball. That's, yeah, the, best, that's, that's right. the best way to face them. <laughs> <laughs> we had a fellow at Kent, legend, Derek Underwood, used to bowl left arm yeah. in the 70s and 80s. And they reckon they made him do night watchman once against that West Indies attack, which he didn't particularly want to do. So he went out, gloved the first ball up in the air, shouted, catch it, and walked off. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, have, have you ever have you ever heard of somebody who was so frightened batting that even though they didn't nick it, they just walked off anyway? <laughs> yeah, I have actually. It sounds like you know someone. I've known there was. I tell you, did that? I shouldn't really say. It, but there was Alex Wolf. I think did that once. Who's now an umpire? <laughs> it's putting him away properly. I've seen. I've batted with people. I have played in Australia, and against that Brett Lee, people like that. And I remember batting with a fellow, I won't say his name, who was a lower, because the, the real courage is the bowlers who can't bat. Yeah. We're meant to have a game for it. But if you've got to stand there, not show you that you're not scared, because we all probably are a little bit, that's where the courage comes in. You know, I can get out of the way of it. They couldn't. And I remember batting with this guy, and he got hit, actually. And you just saw, you've probably seen it in rugby in particular, where he just his eyes are gone where he just, he's so scared that he's not listening to a word you're saying. And I'm sort of going, right, you know, you get down that end and you can face the spinner and I'll take Brett Lee. And I just remember it going, you're listening to me and him just not, just being completely glazed like that and not just gone with fear completely. Really, you can't do anything about it. When I, when I face that under my love of it, you can't do anything about it. Uh, and your yeah, pride no. gets in the way, doesn't it? You, that's what oh. sport, you, you just think, well, I just can't look like I'm scared here. And you sort of hide every, you know, bit of fear that you have and you just say, I've just got to front up here. It's, yeah. I'll tell you what, have you, I don't know if any of you guys have seen the clip of um, some bloke teeing off a tennis ball with the other bloke batting up against the fence. I don't know if you've seen it on YouTube. Keezy, you must have seen it. Go on. I think it's, I think it's down under. He's, he's got a driver in his hand. And he's teeing up a tennis ball, and the bloke is about. Oh yeah, when they hit it. Yeah, five meters away, yeah, and he right. absolutely pins him. <laughs> <laughs> How annoying he's going for a walk. Seriously, I mean, there's nothing more boring, is there? Than oh, like my missus here. Oh, she's going for a walk. I mean, what just am I going to do? Put the gloves on your back and pretend, Rob. I <laughs> know. Oh, that's, that's it. it. You're just so close, in you? Just, just to think, you know, I'm just going to try and sneak and get, don't put this on, but you try and sneak. <laughs> and get I don't know, really. I mean, the one thing I do know, like all of us, we play, I played through the winter in some of the worst weather. We, I mean, it rained, it was windy, it was terrible. All winter, you're just thinking, right, when the summer comes, we're going to have some fun here. And then as soon as this lockdown happened, the sort of clouds parted. Yeah, I think that's the worst bit, isn't and it? it? The oh, weather's been how fantastic. How pure do they look now? Yeah. yeah. I said, I want an answer from all of these, and I don't want any waffle. I just want a quick yes, no, almost. Grip. Do you have to have a perfect grip? No. Can it be strong or weak, then? Does it matter? Uh, probably stronger is easier. Takeaway. Which arm is dominant on the takeaway? Indian. <laughs> Indian. Left. Takeaway, much better. <laughs> do you need to have a when do you need to have an early wrist cock? No. So it can be whenever, but you have to have one, do you? Uh well, Bryson DeChambeau might sort of 
Disagree. <laughs> Disagree, but... Straight, uh, straight left arm? No. Right elbow, can it disappear behind you? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I want answers to these questions. This is what... You know, all these frauds out there who just tell you there's so many different ways to swing a club. I want some answers it's, to these questions. No, no, the, the right arm... No, but this is not the flight. This is this right what... Arm. Right arm sits down, yeah. If the right arm sits down, then it, yeah, it's going to be a better position at the top. Right, at the top of the swing, where's your weight? Heavy. It'll, It'll be more, more, into your, more into your right side. Right, on the heel or on your toe? Uh, more towards the heel. Yeah, the, the goal swing that you've got um, has got you to, you know, six is a decent, is a decent standard. And yes, you can improve, but you... You, you stand, you stand there and, and try and, and you know, you stand there and beat five irons all day and that kind of thing. Is is you're wasting your time? You are wasting your time. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it's it, it, that would not lower your stroke average one bit. If I stood, if I stood on the range and hit three hundred five irons, it wouldn't, it wouldn't lower my stroke average anything. Yeah. Chipping it's, and putting. I mean, chipping and putting. Sitting and chipping and putting. Yeah, the European tour. The European tour put a uh, thing out on social media yesterday what would you do could you if, if you had the choice to hit every fairway or never hit or never three putt what would you choose yeah. and you choose never to three putt every every day of the week and twice on Sundays yeah, it, yeah because you always no, it doesn't matter how far you are away if you three putt from 10 feet or you three putt from 100 feet it still feels the same you, you feel like you've just given a shot away yeah. and you know if you miss a fairway well, how far are you missing a fairway by? You're missing it by a yard or you're missing it by 15 yards. It's, so it, I think you'd be staggered. If you, if you counted how many times you three putt in a, uh, in a year, and if you could say, right, I want to bring that down by 10% the next year, you'd be, you'd be staggered on what your stroke average would be. It's just boring now, isn't it, working on pie? <laughs> on the chat. <laughs> Okay, guys, we're coming to the end of the EXV Zoom chat today with our guest, Rob Key. Uh, for those watching, if you've enjoyed it, please do click on the like, the share, and the subscribe buttons, and uh, click on the notification bell if you want to keep up to date with all the content that we're doing. Final words, I guess, over to Rob. Uh, are you on a mission to get better at this game? Is this the one where you're going to go for five, go for four, get your handicap down to three? Uh, and I guess, Sean, is, is there anything in the game of cricket that you've seen with Rob? that uh, tells you that that's exactly what he's going to do. He will forever be like that until he's 70. He'll be there trying to improve all the time. Answer. Let me tell you, I'll, I'll find the answer. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I'm, I'm on a quest. <laughs>